Since you're watching this, you already know that cordless power tools are super handy and they solve a lot of issues. However, having a lot of different cordless devices can have a downside. Multiple chargers and a tangle of power cords can quickly take over valuable workshop space. Today, I'm going to show you how to make an easy and inexpensive DIY power tool charging station using basic tools. It won't take up any bench space, allows you to monitor the charging status at a glance, and it keeps your workspace tidy. Hi, this is Steve DeMossi, and welcome to Uncharted DIY. Each brand of cordless power tools has its own proprietary batteries and chargers. The more cordless tools you have, the more chargers you have. The end result can take up a lot of space, and if you're like me, you need every bit of working space you can get. One solution to charger overpopulation might be to stick with one brand's tools that share batteries across their ecosystem. However, even within the same manufacturer's tool line, the batteries differ depending on the tool and its power requirements, so you still end up with multiple chargers. And no single brand covers all of the various types of tools you might need. My previous solution was to put the chargers and batteries on a small shelf over my workbench. It's got them off the bench, but I couldn't see the power and status indicator lights, and more than once, I reached for a fresh battery, only to find it had never even charged. Top-loaded batteries were also difficult to get to, especially when only using one hand. Later, I added a couple of cordless tool organizers. These are a great addition for storing my various cordless tools with easy access, and they cleared up some much-needed drawer space. They have upper shelves that would accommodate a few of my chargers, but having them up over my head made seeing the indicators even more of a problem. And so it was time to create a simple power tool charging station. The platform is tilted so you can see all the indicator lights, and the whole station is mounted above the workbench to save space. Now the batteries are conveniently stored and charged near the storage racks and the bench. The cords are tucked into a power strip under the station, eliminating dangling and tangled cords. The whole setup can be turned off with a single switch. The horizontal shelf behind the chargers provides space for extra batteries, and the shelf simply pops off so you can quickly unplug any of the chargers. That way you can easily take them with you, closer to where you're working. Since the chances of you having the same set of chargers that I have are astronomical, I'll show you what considerations I use to create my station. You can use these same design principles to make yours, so you too can have an awesome, one-of-a-kind charging station. First, measure the width and length of each charger. Some are not rectangular and taper instead, so make sure to measure for the widest point. Also, some chargers have a cord that's very rigidly attached, so take that into account. Relief slots will allow the cords to exit the raised edges around each charging base. Once I had each charger measured, I lined them up with at least three quarters of an inch between each one and on each of the ends since the raised dividers are three quarters of an inch wide. I allocated a bit of extra space around the chargers that have vent openings in the base so the charger would have enough airflow to stay cool. This will give you the overall width of your charger station. The charger that's the longest determines the overall depth of the station. Making a 3D mock-up of this charger station might be a bit of overkill for such a simple project, but I created one to make it easier to show you how everything goes together. Rather than making yet another trip to the hardware store, I used leftover wood from other projects. I went with half-inch MDF for the platform and rear shelf, three-quarter inch particle board for the base, and one by two pine for the raised dividers. You can use just about any type of wood for this project, as long as the material for the wall-mounted base is thick enough to solidly hold screws. I cut the platform and shelf from the same piece of MDF using a circular saw and a cutting guide. Though it isn't necessary, I made a 30-degree angled cut between the top of the platform and the front of the shelf. This way the cords have a channel to go through, and the angle makes the channel smaller, eliminating the large gap that would result from 90 degree edges. I used a miter saw for cutting the divider pieces, but if you don't have one, a hand saw or circular saw will get the job done. After cutting all the pieces, I gave them a quick sanding to remove sharp edges and to make it look nicer. Again, totally optional. 
With all the pieces cut, it was time for assembly. I started with the wall mounted base. Using butt joints, I attached the arms of the base to the back of the base with long screws. I first drilled pilot holes to prevent the screws from splitting the wood. Precise drilling in the particle board can be tough since the bit likes to skate around on the various flakes of wood. I used an automatic center punch to make divots in the wood, making it much easier to keep the bit where I wanted it. I countersunk the holes so the screws would be flush. If you need some of these tools, I have links in the description. Some of these links may earn a very small commission at no cost to you, so using them helps support this channel and is much appreciated. Just to make sure the arms will stay tightly attached to the back, I put a bead of glue on before screwing them together using two inch screws. I used a piece of wood to align the top of the arms to the top of the back. With the base complete, I moved on to assembling the divider frame that attaches to the platform. I laid out the pieces along with the chargers to make sure my original measurements were correct. Using a clamp to hold both divider pieces together, I drilled pilot holes followed by the countersink bit. I used one and a half inch screws for these. Now it was time to attach the divider frame to the platform. I clamped the frame and platform to my workbench, then drilled pilot holes and countersunk them. I again used one and a half inch screws to complete the platform assembly. Next, I put the charges in place and marked where the divider would need to be modified so the cords could exit their partitions without preventing the charger from sitting all the way down. I used an oscillating multi-tool to cut the slots and followed with a tapered bit to smooth the slots. These cuts could also be accomplished with a jigsaw, coping saw, or really just about any cutting tool. Use what you have available. Using pilot holes and countersinks again, I mounted the platform assembly to the base arms using a two inch and a one and a quarter inch screw for each arm. The shorter screws go in front since the arms are tapered. After screwing the platform to the base, I removed the screws to make mounting the base to the wall easier. I placed the base on the wall to determine where to drill holes in the back for mounting it. For my placement, I was able to line the center of the base up with the wall stud and then use hollow wall anchors to stabilize it. To mount the power strip, I used a piece of paper on the back of the strip and pressed where the mounting holes were. This created a pattern template to make locating the mounting screws easy. My charging station is located right next to an outlet, so I needed to do something with the excess length of the power strip cord. I used zip ties to keep the excess cord wrapped around the power strip and ran the plug through a hole drilled in the arm. I mounted the base to the stud with two 3 inch screws and used 2 inch screws for the wall anchors. With the base firmly attached to the wall, the final construction step is to reattach the platform to the base. With the rear shelf not yet in place, the wires from the chargers can be plugged into the power strip. I twist tied the excess cord length from each charger so all the wiring remains tucked under the charging station and out of the way of the workbench. The rear shelf is held in place by gravity and lugs that slide snugly over the arms of the base. This allows the shelf to be popped off to allow easy removal of the chargers. The lugs prevent the shelf from moving side to side. Waiting until the charger station is complete and mounted before attaching the lugs is a good idea so you can get a tight fit. I placed the shelf on top of the base, then ran a pencil along the outside of the arms, marking where the lugs will attach to the shelf. I then cut two pieces of the pine left over from the dividers to make the lugs and attach these to the underside of the shelf. And that's it. Power up your chargers, top off your batteries, and enjoy your new clutter-free workspace. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button so YouTube will share this with more people. You might also consider subscribing to this channel and checking the notification bell so you don't miss out on any DIY projects. This is Steve. And thanks for watching Uncharted DIY.